we welcome you, we welcome you into Evans High School in the Evans Gymnasium as we get ready for the Region 3 6A Boys Final. Joel Hillsman alongside Chad Cook. Glad that you're with us. AUG B-Ball Region 3 6A Boys Final. Between the host, Evans Knight, and a surprise, Lakeside Evans. Lakeside Evans, Chad, coming in at 12 and 13 on the season. Evans coming in at 19 and 6. Lakeside Evans with a massive come from behind victory in the fourth quarter yesterday to upset top seeded Grove, Grove Town. Yeah, this is a time of year when you rip up the records and the score, scoreboard, scorebook and the stats. Two rivals playing in a region championship game for the first time in their 30 year rivalry history. Two great coaches, Co Coach Kevin Kenny of Evans with over 400 victories at, at his various stops along the way. Jeff Williams of Lakeside. Lakeside in their 30 plus year history has been to two region championship games. All, both of those have been in the four years since Jeff Williams has taken over for the Panthers. I can't wait to see this game. Jeff Williams, the head coach of Lakeside. They're getting their starters introduced. And I'll introduce them to you as well. Number three, Ricky McGee, a junior, 6'4". Number four, Kyrie Reese, a senior, 6'3". Number five, Elise Iwihu, a senior, 6'4". Number 10, Tyshawn Briscoe, a senior, 6 feet. And number 11, Chris Williams, a senior, 6'7". McGee, Reese, Iwiu, Briscoe, and Williams for head coach Jeff Williams of Lakeside Evans. For the Evans Knight, it'll be number two, Brazen James, a sophomore, 6'1". Number three, Daniel Simpson, a senior, 6'4". Number five, Justin Mincy, a junior, 5'10". Number 12, Christian Chambers, a senior, 6'2". And a change, number 22, Chavez Trask, a senior, 6'4". James, Simpson, Mincy, Chambers, and Trask. For the Evans Knight, head coach, Kevin Kenny. The story is Christian Chambers, a 31-point effort yesterday in the semifinals. But on the other side of the spectrum, Lakeside Evans feeling momentum, 12 and 13, trying to be 500 going into the state tournament, which would mean they'd be a number one seed in hosting. You know, speaking of momentum, Lakeside finished last night's game so strong with the help of two guys off the bench, Alex Aviles and Rico Gonzalez. W wonder when they'll be checking in the game. We are underway. Evans, the home team, both represented by the seed and the gymnasium, all in white, white tops, white bottoms, picking up right where he left off at the bottom of the net. Christian Chambers, a three. Lakeside all in black, black tops, black bottoms, and a dark maroon numbers and maroon trim. They move left to right as you view it now. Inside, Williams, no good. Rebound back up off the window and scores. Chris Williams, who Chad was very effective last night. He sure was. You know, I question uh, the beginning, that first play. I'll get to it in a second. Three is no good. Rebound is ripped off and Harris Briscoe. Long lead pass up ahead. Layup by Reese. No, he got his own board. He takes the contact from Simpson. No, Trask on the glass. Here's Chambers coming back this way. 3-2 ball game early. Here's Justin Mincy. Oh, floor general. He's going to be very good for someone. On the attack, Brayson James, no good. Rebound comes off to Briscoe. Briscoe coming in at just under 18 points per game at 17.9 points per game scoring. Open three, Reese, no, hill of the rim. Rebound is tipped around and Simpson gets the board. That first play of the game, we saw Christian Chambers step in uncontested on a three-point shot. Makes me wonder if Lakeside was really ready to play on that first possession. If there's one guy you don't leave open, it's Chambers. Risco on the attack, missed it. Chambers got it back out to Mincy. Mincy running in transition, knifes down the lane and dishes to James, layup good, Brazen James, his first field goal, James coming off of a 19 point effort in the semifinals yesterday. Great job by Joshton Mincy, staying under control there, making the easy little pass to James. Reese living right with the jump, Kyrie Reese, the senior, his first field goal, five to four, 608. Chambers on the attack, lost it, and a foul is called. Lakeside's done a better job since that first possession when they gave Christian Chambers a clean look. Playing zone against Evans is playing with fire when, you, when it comes to Christian Chambers on the other end. Uh, AUG B-ball instant replay, that opening three from Chambers right there. Trask underneath, Trask fighting, no. Board comes off to Christian Williams. 
Williams gives it over to Briscoe, and Briscoe comes across the timeline. The Wee Who was open, but Mincy closed out on him very good. They get it back to him now, trying to feed it into Williams. He said no. Big Trask putting that body on him. Rashad King, who got the start yesterday, will come off of the bench for Coach Kenny. Screen roll action. Open three. Hill of the rim. Long rebound. Comes back out to Briscoe. He pulls a deep three himself. Bottom of the net. The three ball is good from Ty Briscoe. His first field goal. Briscoe being the main threat for Lakeside. He gets an open one just like Chambers did. His came off a long rebound. Mincy's three is no good. Tear him off. Well, Lakeside now building momentum as you head into the state tournament where they go in with a region championship between these two old rivals. Drive on the baseline. Nice move by Iwihu. No good. Rebound comes off. Not Iwihu. Excuse me, Ricky McGee. Why do I get McGee and Iwihu confused? The jerseys. No, I'm over that now. Jumper. Chambers bottom. Christian Chambers, man, just doing what he does. Strolling in the afternoon park and busing Jays. Seven all. Every time it leaves Christian Chambers' hands, I think it's going in. Briscoe. Air ball. And the Evans crowd lets him hear about it. I'm surprised to see Rashad King checking in and not starting the ball game. I'm also eyeing that lakeside bench to see when we will see Alex Aviles and Rico Gonzalez, two of the heroes from last night's big comeback. Yes, indeed, off of the bench. Chambers pulls another deep three. Okay, Christian Chambers is feeling it early. He has eight early points, and he's shopping from long distance. 10 to 7, 420. If I'm Christian Chambers after make, making eight three-pointers last night, I am salivating at the chance to play against a zone defense from Lakeside High School. Reese drives and scores. Yes, you heard Chad Cook correctly. Eight made three-pointers yesterday en route to 31 points. James goes baseline. He was cut off, left his feet on the pass. Chambers saved it. Chambers' jumper is blocked by Williams, and now a late foul is called. That is going to take a little explaining from the officials. We had a blown whistle and then a signal that said he got all ball. And they wipe it away and we'll give it to Lakeside. Briscoe to Reese. Reese to Weehu. And Weehu in the corner, worked on now by King. Down low to Williams, catches it, goes up, follow, good by Reese. Reese with six early points here in this opening quarter. Pushes Lakeside back out in front, 11 to 10. That shows the dilemma from Jeff Williams. After last night, Coach Jeff Williams from Lakeside told me that when Avilas and Gonzalez came in, he called that going small. So who comes out in that instance? That would be a Wehu and Reese. And we see Reese with six early points. So you, you give and you take when you make those adjustments. Steal. Briscoe gets the outlet. Briscoe left, good. Right hand, right side, a fundamental practice layup. Push the lead out to three. Lakeside Evans has a little pop in their step. Kick ball, knocked out of bounds. Well, Lakeside's playing very well with this three-point lead, and if you take away the scorching hot shooting from Christian Chambers, it would even be greater than that. Here's Mincy. He will come across the timeline and spin it to King. King into James, a corner three on the way. Hill of the rim, no. Board is wiped up. By Elihu, long lead pass, here comes Reese. Reese catches, Reese tried to dump it down to Williams, out of bounds. Tell you what, if I'm Evans, after that Brayson James three on one pass a second ago, if I'm Evans, I'm at least gonna probe this zone to see if I can get Chambers a, a nice shot against it before uh, going elsewhere with the offense. Rashad King coming in from Alaska, gives it to Chambers and now back to King. He mentioned him not starting. It's kind of been one of those things where he's came off of the bench normally and then got the start just for matchup purposes yesterday. Coach Kenny wanted to throw something else there in his opposition. A traveling violation on Chambers. On the attack, McGee goes up and is foul. Simpson could have been hit with goaltend by grabbing the net, a blocking foul. So going to the free throw line will be the 6'4 junior and Ricky McGee. Coach Kenny's furious at Christian Chambers. You see him not matched up on Chris, uh, Ricky McGee there, giving up the two free throws as a result. You see Coach Kenny getting up there at the end of that replay. Ricky McGee had five points in the victory yesterday and hits his first free throw. Push the lead out to four. Largest lead now so far. 
for Lakeside Evans. Back iron, he split them. Board ripped down by King up to Chambers. 226, second, first quarter. King on the attack. Tried to drop it off to Brazen James, who was coming baseline. Out of bounds and a turnover for Evans. Evans coming in now, riding a five game win streak. And Chad, not the pace that we saw yesterday against Heritage Conyers, but still a high pace because, uh, excuse me, they still have the ability to pick up the pace. Have scored 80 or more points in four of their last five games on this five game win streak. Well, it might not be the pace and the high scoring affair it was yesterday, but one thing that's been consistent is the sharp shooting of Christian Chambers. Chambers with eight early points doing sniper action. Here's Briscoe, picked up defensively by Mincy. Over to McGee. Jumper, Reese, no, Williams lost the board right there. Jump hook underneath, it did not go. They fight for it and King comes away with it to Chambers. They're running in transition, Christian Chambers will wait and just pass it over to Mincy in the corner. Simpson, that's his spot, a three. Hill of the rim, no. James offensive rebound, but lost it. Four-point game, 80 seconds, first quarter. Briscoe down the lane, breaks out the flotation device, but could not get it to go. Rebound comes off the King, outletting quickly to Chambers. Chambers pulls up jumper. It is off, board by Williams. Williams collects it, protects it, and gives it over to Briscoe, who pops it up ahead quickly to Reese. Reese goes in, took contact. It did not go. Mincy got the glass. Under a minute, first quarter. Mincy had it taken away almost. Fight for it. Jump ball. Possession to Lakeside. Substitutions now. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No. Jay Stevens checking in the 6'2 sophomore, number 25, for Evans. Two longtime friends there, Ricky McGee and Josh and Mincy, been playing basketball together since er the early ages, fighting for that loose ball region championship action. Briscoe has it at the top. Stevens picked up on him. That's a little bit of a mismatch, maybe. Running something at the top. So here is Briscoe. Briscoe now kicks it back. There's a three on the way. Bottomed it out. A three ball by Ricky McGee. So McGee getting it going early now and pushes the lead out to seven for Lakeside Evans. Chambers, a turnover, poor decision. He's looking at the ref and asking for the foul. Personally, I love to see Ricky McGee make that shot. Ricky missed all of last season with an injury. Great to see him back here on the court. Final five seconds. Briscoe doesn't see the clock. Now he gets the screen, spins it over, Reese to beat the horn. No, they moved a little lethargic there to end the quarter. But guess what? They have a 17-10 lead. Lakeside over Evans. AUGB ball region 36A boys finals. We'll return in just a moment. We'll take you out with this AUGB ball instant replay. You are anything but ordinary. You have your own path and your own potential to realize. At Augusta University, the advantages created by our diversity in thought, culture, and collaboration give you and us infinite opportunity. Together, we're changing our community, our campus, and our world. We are boundless. We are Augusta University. Second quarter is underway. Lakeside and Evans. Evans in possession, but turn it over on the opening possession of the second quarter. Joel Hillsman, Chad Cook, and our SUV TV baseline seats inside the gymnasium at Evans High School, Evans, Georgia. Just outside of 
Augusta, Columbia County. And an offensive foul, loose ball called on Kyrie Reese. Thoughts in that first quarter, Chad, with Evans only scoring 10 points, eight of them coming from Kristen Chambers. And now this official walks over and speaks with the assistant coach who puts his hand in his head. And I know what that is about. Yeah, thoughts on that first quarter, though. You know, we just saw Kyrie Reese get an over-the-back call, and that brings to mind the difference in this game so far has been Lakeside crashing the offensive glass. They got second-chance buckets from Weehu, uh, Reese, and I believe Christian Williams as well, uh, you know, getting high-percentage looks, whereas Evans, besides the, the eight points, eight quick points by Christian Chambers, not as crisp offensively, and right before that drive, Christian had turned the ball over twice, getting too deep into the uh, into traffic. And breaks the little run there. It was an 8-0 run for Lakeside Evans, but he splits the free throws, does Chambers, 17 to 11. Lakeside Evans in possession. Here's Briscoe, curling it now to McGee. McGee filling it to Williams, picked up by Simpson defensively. Double comes from James. He turns, jumper is long. Simpson gets the board, protects it, and gets it out to Mincy. Up ahead to Chambers. Here's Mincy cutting to Stevens. Stevens took contact, and he was fouled, and will go to the free throw line. So Jay Stevens trying to come in off of the bench, the 6'2 sophomore. It was a good ball movement, and Mincy underrated from a point guard spot in which he really is a floor general. Yes. Made a nice feed. First bucket of the game came from Mincy to Brayson James. And then there he sets up Jay Stevens with another opportunity. Stevens makes the first free throw. And he'll have one more coming up. That's good. The Grove Town Lady Warriors coming out with a region title. Medals around their neck. The drive, Briscoe jumper, it is no good. Rebound is swallowed up by Christian Chambers. Chambers on the attack, lost it, and a foul to be called on Ricky McGee. It's a good look by Briscoe a moment ago. The only problem with it, it's off of zero passes, so the defense is definitely set. It's hard to, even though he did get himself a great look, it's hard to make those shots with, with no ball movement. See Coach Jeff Williams lobbying his case. Jeff has been under the weather a little bit this week. Did not stand at all yesterday in the semifinals. But it's amazing what a victory will do. <laughs> Healed up overnight and standing. Simpson corner three, no. Board underneath Stevens, no. Simpson fights for it, peels it, and gets the board. Three ball, long, no good. Rebound is corralled by Briscoe out of the guard spot. Briscoe having a much better start to this contest than yesterday. We know how that finished up. Two minutes gone, second quarter. Avila is into the contest. Feeds it in the chambers. One big dribble, turning on fading, but King there defensively made it a difficult shot. Outlet pass to Stevens. Stevens to Mincy. Mincy gets to a spot, pulls a three. Badly missed. Simpson, offensive rebound. Dumps it down low. King up and in. Rashad King is first field goal. Rashad King so smooth. He does so many things well. We saw him thrive on defense yesterday. There we see him maneuvering in close quarters, finishing the second chance opportunity. Avila, escape dribble, three. Hill of the rim, high arc, rebound is offensive by Williams. Williams shoots it in. Now Reese turns on King, up, no good. Got his own board, goes up again, no good. Put it up, no, again. Gonzalez is in there with the rebound. Could not get the bunnies to go. Pass stolen by Chambers, foul call. Lakeside just couldn't get any of those chances, to, uh, any of those second chance opportunities to fall. Reese, Williams, Gonzalez all crashing the glass, but coming away empty handed. Three ball, right wing, no good. Chambers tried to get the board, tipped it, Williams gets it. Scoring's coming at a premium here after that initial burst from Chambers. Nobody's been able to find a great rhythm offensively. They have not, but they're, they've got a little 5-0 spurt here through the first three minutes and some change in this second quarter. 
Lakeside Evans, meanwhile, is scoreless. Avilas hands it off to McGee. Now here's a drive from Briscoe. Briscoe blocked from behind, and a foul is called. Reese, not McGee. King hit with the foul. See, I think that's the difference. Earlier we saw Ty Briscoe drive to the basket off zero passes and, you know, get himself a decent shot, unable to convert. There you see a lot of ball movement, dribble handoff, and then he attacks the basket, gets himself to the free throw line. First free throw from Briscoe is good. Briscoe now with six points in the contest. Take a look at him coming in at 17 points per game, two and a half boards and four assists per game for Briscoe. It's good, the senior. And a timeout has been called by Lakeside. It'll be their first charge timeout. And I'm not sure if it was a 30 or a full. They are sitting down, so it is a full timeout. This timeout brought to you by AUG B-Ball. Taking a look inside of the Evans huddle. Evans coming in at 19 and six on the season. Two and zero in out of state games, victories over Silver Bluff and East Clarendon out of South Carolina. And coming in averaging right around 70 points per game offensively. Defensively, 63.1 points per game. Coach Kenny in his 10th year, he won his 150th game at Lakeside, yes, uh, excuse me, at Evans with the victory yesterday over Heritage Conyers. Off the bench and into the scorebook, Cam Warren, the junior with the J. Back quickly, Briscoe attacking and the foul on the shot from the center official. And let's see who the center official calls it on. Well, Briscoe will go back to the free throw line. He's two of two, just popped in two just a moment ago, and it strips the net on that one. Briscoe's really putting a lot of pressure on Evans' defense by attacking the basket. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let's go and get another free throw. It's good. <laughs> 21 to 17, a four point advantage for Lakeside Evan. Mincy comes across the timeline. Here's King. King now to Mincy. Mincy jump pass in the corner to Warren. Warren shoots it across down low. Stevens, too many steps. Three fifty-six and a moving clock. Let's see if Briscoe attacks here again right off the dribble. Pull up three. He attacked with the jumper. A three ball. His second of the day for Ty Briscoe. So you were on cue, Chad. He attacked. Just pull that J. Yeah, he's been softening them up, them up with that dr the drive to the basket. Justin Mincy comes back with a drive after the ball fake and scores. Cuts it to five. 24-19, under three and a half second quarter. Briscoe pulls another three. No, board King. A bit of a heat check there. He had scored on the prior three possessions. Stevens flies in and scores. His first field goal, Jay Stevens. Briscoe across the Evans logo. Down low, up off the window. Reese, no, King on the glass. Outletting it to Mincy. Mincy puts it up ahead, layup, Cam Warren blew it. He was so wide open. Offensive rebound, Stevens. The Mincy fakes the pass. Now here comes King. King is out of control. It's a blocking foul call. And Coach Jeff Williams, highly upset. He popped out of his seat very quickly at this official. Our AUG B-ball instant replay. Man, was Coach Williams hot. Oh, yeah, he was moving just a little bit there. That's what you call a blarge. You know what a blarge is, Chad? A block charge. Oh, very good. Coach Kenny now walks up 
He wants an explanation. Rashad King will be going to the free throw line. King with two points in the contest. 2.49 to go in this second quarter. And a three-point advantage for Lakeside. King, first free throw in the air and good. One more coming up for Rashad King. Coming over from Anchorage, Alaska. Split him. Ever been to Alaska, Chad? I have not been to Alaska. Wasn't for the Discovery Channel, I wouldn't know what it looks like. <laughs> In the corner, Oihu. Oihu gets to his spot, flipped it up. No, board, Oihu, up. No, board, again, Oihu. Goes to the corner, now back out. Three ball, Gonzalez on the way. No, rebound, King. Multiple second chance opportunities there for Lakeside Evans, unable to cash it. Mincy all the way, left hand leg, good, Justin Mincy. Back quickly now, high layup, Ricardo Gonzalez. The pace has picked up here at Evans. 26-24 indeed, final two minutes. Chambers, little tricky dribble, gets to his spot, pulls up, it is short, fell on his fanny. They get the offensive rebound, Mincy a three, crack the glass, rebound up. King, no, follow, Chambers, no, and there was a whistle, and you're right. Did not even hear the whistle, they kept playing. 148 to go. King will be going to the free throw line. We take a look at our AUG B-ball instant replay. King went right back up with it, the foul underneath on Oihu. You know, you mentioned a moment ago this, the multiple second chance opportunities missed by Lakeside. That's happened several times. At the end of that, Rashad King pulled down a very tough defensive rebound, and then he followed suit there on the offensive end. So he's on the glass for Evans. He's going to have to get some help, though, because Lakeside is all over the glass. They are, and Chris Williams checks back in as King makes the second of two. Cut it to one, 26-25, 100 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Briscoe picked up by Mincy. He drives to the right. Good defense from Mincy. Gets it back to Stevens, but that's because Stevens is on the other team. A steal. Stevens, little tricky dribble. Mincy, three ball on the way. No, tip underneath. And Brazen James gets it. No, board ripped away. James fighting in there. He's fighting. No, that's King. Fouled and will go to the free throw line. So Rashad King now has turned on the activity down low on the offensive glass. Watch him rip this ball away from Chris Williams. Just wanted that one more. Sure did. Had that inside possession, uh, position and took it away. So King back to the free throw line. He's been living here the last couple of trips, but he's not cashing them in. And he's two of five now from the free throw line. One more coming. This one to tie it up. One point game. It's good. If Rashad King can settle down and make some more of these free throws, I look for him to be a major impact player in this game. 26 to 26, he's had his impact so far in this second quarter, has five points, did not get the start today. Off of the bench did Rashad King come. Yeah, I think Rashad King's one of the best several players in our entire area. Another whistle. Foul call on Evans. And then Justin Mincy. And, and most of his disbelief and the chagrin of the other 1,000 plus officials here as well. Briscoe will come across the time on an Evans logo. Josh has got two hands behind his back here. Briscoe attacks. No. Mincy comes away with it. Bounces it up ahead. Stevens on the break. Layup. Good. Chase Stevens. Stevens has came off the bench and been very, very good. And Evans has taken the lead, 28 to 26. A 7-2 push. Final 45 seconds. Avila has it, worked on by James between the rings. They're trying to run something for Gonzalez on a curl. The jumper, it is short. Rebound, tip. Chambers saved it, but then saved it out of bounds. 31 and 16 seconds remaining. Daniel Simpson will return. 
And Justin Mincy will have a seat. Inbound now to Avilas. Final half minute of the first half. Avilas worked on by James. And it gives it to Briscoe, who has the longer king on him. So now they want to go Williams in the post. Good job of Chambers of fronting. Jumper is no good. Williams tipped it. No. It goes to the corner out of bounds. Looking, looking, looking. We're asking for help. And it will stay with Lakeside. Another missed opportunity by Lakeside. They're getting great looks, just unable to make them count. Avilas has it. Avilas gives it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez circles to his spot. It is no good. They are off today. Rebound to Weehu. Blocked from James from behind. Simpson comes away with it. The King, and King is fouled by Briscoe on the floor. Not a good foul by Tyshawn Briscoe. The guy's got the ball 85 feet away from the basket, and you give him two free throws or at least a chance at a one and one. And the shot King going back to the free throw line. He's three of six in the game, all six previous attempts here in this second quarter. This just gives King a chance to get into rhythm because he'll start making these free throws the more opportunities he gets. In and out, no good. And also with that foul being called that late, that far away from the basket to accentuate your point, and then with a tenth of a second or five tenths of a second remaining. I mean, if you draw a charge there or even steal the ball, it's probably not going to turn into two points for your team. We have reached the end of the first half. Evans dug down deep and had a 19-point second quarter and take a three-point lead into the halftime break. 29-26, Evans lead Lakeside Evans. As you take a look at Jay Stevens, who was very effective, he had six points off of the bench, all of them in that second quarter. AUGB Ball Region 368 Boys Final will continue in just a moment. You are anything but ordinary. You have your own path and your own potential to realize. At Augusta University, the advantages created by our diversity in thought, culture, and collaboration give you and us infinite opportunity. Together, we're changing our community, our campus, and our world. We are boundless. We are Augusta University. To Mayor Brown with SUV TV at the CP3 Rising Stars Camp. SUV TV's 2019 NBA Draft Day coverage. Anthony Edwards' collegiate decision presented by the Georgia Hoop Circle on SUV TV. SUV TV brings the game to the audience. You give a better focus on the actual game at hand. Sometimes you could tell it's just a running camera by itself sitting there, but with SUV TV, it's more of a personal experience. Just the exposure, being able to see games that you normally wouldn't be able to see, not only here locally, but across the country. Those angles make you pick up different things as a coach, as an evaluator. They're giving you great quality. Nobody talking in the background. I think it, it, it brings basketball to the forefront. Whether it's a family member that lives in a different state, they can, they can watch the game, or just bringing in more coverage for these players, or if it's just allows us to raise more money for something like Susan G. Komen. And so I think this event has grown because you guys have been a part of it the whole entire time. SUV TV has given a different light to kids that don't always get the best exposure. The commentary that goes along with the games, I think is always interesting. <laughs> down. Oh, yes, sir. It brings something to the table that no other streaming aspect can bring, uh, no matter how hard they try right now. Dayton Avian Williamson at the buzzer. That yes, is how man. you get the Peachtree Corners Invitational started. And that will do it. Thanks for joining.
We welcome you back inside Evans High School, Evans High School Gymnasium. Joel Hillsman, Chad Cook, glad that you were with us as we get ready for the second half. Evans with a 29-26 lead over Lakeside Evans. As we get ready for the third quarter, first half thoughts, Chad. Well, if you remember, the score after one was 17 to 10 Lakeside's advantage. So a nine point second quarter from Lakeside and seven of those came on three possessions consecutively by Tyshawn Briscoe. So quite a bit of trouble offensively for Lakeside in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Evans put 19 on the board, got um, Jay Stevens, easy buckets from him, a lot of uh, free throws and a bucket in close by Rashad King. So while Lakeside has really hit the skids, Evans is finding a much easier time scoring the basketball. Something will have to change here in the third quarter if Coach Jeff Williams and the Panthers don't want to see Evans run away with this thing. Taking a look at some first half numbers, Christian Chambers with nine points, Rashad King with six, leading the way for Evans. For Lakeside, Ty Briscoe getting it going had 12 points in that first half, followed by Kyrie Reese, six. Brazen James, quiet in that first half, only two points. We'll see what kind of impact he has in the second half. Lakeside Evans is in possession. They're in the black tops, black bottoms with the dark burgundy or maroon numbers. And Evans is all in white, and a three is good, Alex Avila. This was an adjustment yesterday. He got the start in the third quarter, and now bangs home a three ball here. Even ball game, 29 all. Also getting the start in this third quarter is Rashad King for Evans. James is three, is no good. And we talked about how he had been in and out of the starting lineup and getting good production off of the bench today for Coach Kevin Kenny. Aviles has it and gives it over now to McGee. Spin uh, to Reese. Get it down low. Back to the basket. Nothing there. Here's McGee to Aviles. Avila's picked up his dribble, and then it was almost stolen by Brazen James. Williams comes high out of the basket to save it. Into the corner. There's a drive. Now kick it back out to steal. Here comes Chambers. Chambers with a move. Chambers took contact. Meet me at the rim, and don't be late. He got the block, but then stepped out of bounds. Elise Iwihu. What, hey. what a great defensive play by Iwihu. Right before that, Alex Avila's made, a, in my mind, a pretty big mistake just going for the ball recklessly. But Iwihu had his back. Yes, wonderful defensive effort. You saw it there on our AUGB ball instant replay. Rashawn King gets it back to Justin Mincy, now to King. King back to the basket, down low. Trask, Trask goes up. It was bothered and blocked. Big body boy gets the board again. Trask underneath, he's double. Trask with a bevy of up fakes, goes up, no. Williams finally rips it away from him. Daniel Simpson not getting the start here in this third quarter as King took that spot. Up ahead to James. James now gives it back to Chambers. Picked up defensively by Avilas. Over to Mincy. King runs baseline now. Some patience shown. Trask coming to give the screen and gets it. Goes, pulls up a long two. No good. Rebound put up by Chambers. No. Raising James with the offensive rebound to Trask. Spins it back. Here's Chambers. Chambers gets down and knifes his way down the lane and up no good. Could not get it to go. Ricky McGee, the 6'4 junior, gets the board. Back in transition all the way. Layup and rolled in. Good. Oihu with the score. His first field goal. And now a 5-0 start for Lakeside Evans in this third quarter. Gives them a two-point lead. Brazen James, jumper, no. Brazen. Unable to get it going today. Put back by Rashad King. I just love his activity around the basket on offense. He's been a real force on the offensive glass. It's a score and one more for Chris Williams. Kyrie Reese and Chris Williams have been playing well around the basket, but unable to see much of what they shoot fall in the basket. If that gets them going, that'll be big for Lakeside. 33-31. And Williams to try and complete the three-point play. He does not. Evans gets the board. 
Simpson, corner, three, short. Unable to get it to go today. Avilas gets the rebound and races out in transition. Avilas lost his control and footing and goes out of bounds, but it went off of Evans. And will be Lake Evans, bas Lakeside Evans basketball. Three minutes gone by, exact. Five minutes on the third quarter timer. And about baseline. Took it up, no. Rebound fought for underneath, could not get it over the lip of the rim. Battling for it again down low and out of bounds, and this time it will go to the possession of Evans. Mincy to Chambers, back to Mincy. Spins it to King, King on the attack, stop, floater, no. Simpson tried to corral the rebound and lost it out of bounds. This game is being won in the trenches. Everything's in the paint. A lot of second chance opportunities for both teams. Avila's three is no good. Rebound is tipped out of bounds. And we'll go to Evans, 33-31 with 427 remaining in this third quarter. Region 3, 6A championship on the line and the number one seed headed to the state tournament, which will begin next Friday. For the love of basketball on Valentine's Day. Uh, that's operative when basketball is your girlfriend and your wife. Oh, no sound effects for that corner read? <laughs> <laughs> 408 to go. Reese now gives it. I'm into the game. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, Chad just took a shot at me. No, no, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't game. mean that. I know what you meant. Come on, Cook. Now it's game number four working with me. You ought to be on the, on the boat now. McGee holding it on the cut is Avihu. Avihu, jumper, it was long. Rebound comes off, and now here comes King. Head up past the Mincy. Mincy lost it. Cookies in the thievery, take it away. Here comes Avilas. Avilas running. Avilas all the way up. Offensive foul, Alex Avilas. Young sophomore picked up the offensive foul. So with neither team able to convert around the basket, I keep saying this game's being won in the trenches, but I, I'm going to go ahead and switch up here and say whoever can start making shots is going to be the victor in this one. Chambers, Mincy, King, Simpson, and James, the five on the floor for Evans. Avilas, Iwihu, Williams, McGee, and Reese. The five on the floor for Lakeside Evans. Out of bounds as they hit the tape. And Coach Kenny does not agree, but it did. <laughs> you can see the wire shaking up there. <laughs> Coach Kenny goes and has a seat. 150 wins at Evans. Achieved that last evening. Coach Jeff Williams, 68 and 39 now in year number four at Lakeside Evans and has been to the state playoffs three previous years. This is their fourth year in a row. Made it to the quarterfinals a couple of years ago and noticeably with a 15 and 13 record. If they got to the quarterfinals again this year, it'd be similar. Two point advantage, under three minutes to go third quarter. Williams retrieves it in the corner, and here's McGee. A deliberately slowed down possession right now for the Panthers. Yeah, as we see Lakeside kind of struggle to get a good look, you got to wonder when Tyshawn Briscoe might check in the game. He's sat the, almost the first six minutes of this second half. Yeah, stealing minutes. Block. Rebound comes off now to Chambers, and he'll come back this way with 224. Chambers, a little bevy move. Over to Mincy. Mincy goes baseline. Dumped it into the middle to Simpson. Up and in and scores. Daniel Simpson, his first field goal. And it comes deep into the third quarter, but it evens the contest at 33. You mentioned uh, Joshton Mincy's floor general style set Daniel Simpson up beautifully there. His head is always on a swivel. He's what you want. Shot the passing lane. King with the steal. King on the break. Layup dunk for Shot King. Anticipatory defense led to the still and lay for Rashad King. He casually tipped that thing and controlled it like he was taking a walk in the park. 
100 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Evans has gone back out in front, 33, 35, 33. Down the lane, McGee goes and scores. Ricky McGee. Three ball, Chambers, no, board secured by Reese. Lakeside's playing with fire, giving Christian Chambers that clean of a look in the zone. He hasn't been cooking, though, since that hot eight points in that first quarter. Has not had a field goal made since then. Mm -hmm. McGee, three is no. Rebound fell right to Iwihu, who floated it home. He's got four, all of them here in this third quarter. Under a minute, Mincy moves. Mincy to the hoop. It was blocked by Williams. Recovered now by Reese. Up ahead, Avila's escape dribble. Pulls a three. No. Board, rebound, right back up. Awihu. At least Awihu, the 6'4 senior, has came to life in this fourth, third quarter with six points. Now we see those second chance opportunities start to fall for Lakeside. Consecutive possessions, second chance buckets for the Panthers. Chambers on the attack, no, and he was fouled on the shot. It always concerns, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I started to make a statement and I'm not going to. <laughs> Chambers going to the free throw line. He's one of two on the day. Chambers coming off of a 31 point effort in the semifinal victory yesterday over Heritage Conyers. Free throw is good from Chambers. You mentioned Chambers not making a field goal since the first quarter. Two shots at the free throw line often gets a shooter going. If he can convert this next one, we'll see if that carries over. Tyshawn Briscoe back into the contest. An excellent point that you make there, Chad. He's had three made field goals. He came out like a hot knife through butter, but that butter has hardened now. And that knife is cold. 39, 37, a two-point advantage to the team in black. The guest, Lakeside Evans. Final five seconds. They've got to go and get a shot. Down the lane, takes it up. Oihu, no, tip it. We'll count. Oihu. Counting the basket, Elise Oihu. And that is how the third quarter will end. We'll take a look at the SUV AUGB ball instant replay. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and count it. 41-37, fourth quarter on the other side of this break. You are anything but ordinary. You have your own path and your own potential to realize. At Augusta University, the advantages created by our diversity in thought, culture, and collaboration give you and us infinite opportunity. Together, we're changing our community, our campus, and our world. We are boundless. We are Augusta University. And the Lakeside Evans Panthers as we begin the fourth quarter, Joe Hillsman, Chad Cook, and our SUV TV baseline seats. Lay up Jay Stevens. Good. Jay Stevens did not play at all in that third quarter. He has eight points after a massive six points of efficiency in the second quarter. Line score, Evans 10, 19, and 8 through the first three. Lakeside Evans line score, 17, 9, and 15 through the first three. And they hold a two-point advantage, 41-39. Lakeside Evans moving right to left as you view it on your phone, your laptop, your desktop, your TV, or your tablet, your mobile device. Not a lot of movement for Lakeside. Corner three on the wave, stripped the net. You knew one was going to bound to be falling, and there it is from Alex Avila. That's his second one. Push that lead out now to five. 44-39, minute gone by. King makes a move, left of the lane, no good. Board is swallowed up, but then King came and took it away from it. What in the world? What a break for Lakeside. Uh, 
you look at the replay there. King goes up. <laughs> Briscoe comes across the timeline. Worked on by Stevens defensively. Briscoe driving down the lane. Up. Oh, no. Whistle. Offensive foul. Tyshawn Briscoe. Briscoe had 12 points in that first half, but only played two and a half minutes there in that third quarter. Well, you know, he checked in at two and a half, but that clock ran for about two minutes after that. He came in at the 21 second mark, if I'm not mistaken. You know, he fouled at the end of the second quarter. We talked about it a lot. Um, I wonder if he was out due to foul trouble. If so, that last charge would play a, play a role. Chambers drives and scores. Christian Chambers, his first field goal since the first quarter. And it's an and one opportunity. We talked about getting going from seeing a couple balls go in the hole from the free throw line. He went right to work here, finishing over the six foot seven frame of Christian, Chris Williams. He'll go to the free throw line and try and complete the three point play. He's three of four on the day, four of five, and completes it. That finish by Christian Chambers over Chris Williams reminds me of the first two times I ever saw those guys play, and that was in middle school in eighth grade. Christian for Columbia Middle and Chris for Grovetown Middle. They were the two best players in the county back then, and they're doing work here as seniors. Jumper from Reese is no good. Rebound swallowed up on the glass by Rashad King. King has played an outstanding basketball game. Mincy into the corner to Simpson, back to Mincy. Mincy going to come on the attack. Now the retreat to them. Simpson a three on line, no. Board chased down by Chambers. He saved it in the King lab, good. Oh, you want to talk about a 50-50 ball turning into two points. The hustle from Christian Chambers, he got the rebound and the dime. Even ball game, 44 all, and now Evans cheerleaders try to inject a little energy in it. Owehu drives and he is fouled. Man, Owehu on the attack. He had eight points, all of them in that third quarter. AUGB ball instant replay. Watch this. Simpson, no good. Look at Chambers. Flying in. There's the rebound. Checks his feet. Now I'm going out of bounds. There you go. Take care of that for me. Didn't put it on the floor. King went straight up. So who now is at the free throw line for Lakeside Evans. His first trip to the line today. Brick, no good. A moment ago, that charge by Tyshawn Briscoe. I bet that was his fourth foul because he's back out of this ball game. Split them. 45-44, and now a timeout has been called. And let's see who it will be charged to. It must be a 30. No one is sitting down. Let's see. But it's official. A timeout has been charged. I do not know who it was charged to. I apologize. And now we have an official who's going to Speak with 45 to 44 with 538 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Joe Hillsman, Chad Cook, glad that you're with us. AUG B Ball Region 36A Boys Final. Playing for the region title and the number one seed in the state. Uh, just recently here we've seen a two free throw trip by Christian Chambers, a three-point play by Chambers, and an assist to Rashad King. Let's see if we see something else from you. Well, actually a turnover. Out of the timeout, something you don't want. Iwihu comes away with the steal. Iwihu recovers. Iwihu had a toe on the line. He's out of bounds. So after Chambers turns it over, he gets right back after it and forces Iwihu to turn it over. Chambers. Pulls up, three on line, bottom of the net. Now he's going to warm to the task in this fourth quarter. Are you going to finish it strong as he started it strong? We'll see. 47 to 45, a two-point lead for Evans. Well, Velas retreats out. He's worked on by Mincy. Mincy now gives it off. Down the lane, McGee comes. He spins it over. There's a jumper. Iwihu, no good. Rebound by Chambers. It fell off, though, and King recovered it to Mincy. Clock goes under five minutes.
King lost it underneath. A poor decision on the pass. A steal by Avilas. Avilas had it taken away from behind. Chambers. Foul, Avilas. The Lakeside Evans crowd doesn't think so. Four twenty, and a moving clock. Two point advantage for Evans. They're in possession. Chambers between the rings. In the corner now to Stevens. Stevens picked up that dribble and gives it back to Chambers. Halfway gone, fourth quarter. Open, three, no. Rebound, Chambers to the floor. Gonzalez comes away with it to Avilas. Avilas trying to put the pressure on. Gets it up ahead. Back to Avilas. Avilas retreats to the corner and now peels it back out. 3.40 to go. Trailing by a bucket. In. Shot is no good. Rebound. Reese. Reese back up. Foul will be called. I sure didn't know what Alex Avilas had in mind there. Throwing the ball into double coverage against Ky uh, on Kyrie Reese, but it all worked out as long as Reese can convert from the foul line. Kyrie Reese will go to the strike with 3.30 to go. Free throw rattles in good for Reese. Reese with seven points, his first points since early in the fourth, first quarter. He had six points in the first quarter. Got him off to a good start. Remember, Chad, he was crashing the glass and getting offensive rebound and second chance opportunities. Yeah, he's just slightly undersized down there. So I was thinking, you know, kind of forcing it into him against being fronted in the zone with a guy behind wouldn't have worked out. But Reese is a gamer, gets to the foul line, makes two in the most pressure-packed moment. there was a time for Lakeside to make sure they know where Christian Chambers is on the court playing out of this zone defense. It's right now. I feel like Chambers has gotten himself into a good groove. If he gets, gets free for a shot, I think you can count it. Mincy has it as Evan sets it up. Oh. Steal, lead pass, up ahead. Gonzalez, layup, good, and they take the lead. Ricardo Gonzalez, it's second field goal of the contest. They take the lead, 49 to 47. Big time rebound by Chris Williams, and then a presence of mind to outlet it without turning it over. He was under heavy pressure after rebounding that ball. Another whistle. And do we have a technical foul call? I think, that's, I think that's a foul off the ball on Rico Gonzalez trying to maybe face guard Christian Chambers, keep him from getting the ball on the wing. Chambers, three on the wing. Hill of the rim, high rebound. Brazen James tipped it, recovered by Mincy. Now to Chambers. Chambers down the lane like a running back. Coach Jeff Williams cannot believe it. He walks down the bench, throws his hands up. Now, Coach Kenny rips and brings Mincy in there. Let's take a look at our SUV TV instant replay. Man, he just tripped yeah. going to the hoop. The officials now getting together and having a discussion. Yeah, jo Josh and Mincy was over there talking to the crowd. You see that little group of Lakeside students standing up, probably mocking him a little bit. And did Mincy maybe pick up a technical? That's that's what I'm thinking, because I heard that double tweet. When you hear that double tweet, 
And it usually means somebody just got a tee. Yeah, Mincy's over at half court kind of doing this little gesture where he's telling them maybe to quit talking. But Briscoe has fouled out through all of that with 2.39 to go. That's a lot of scoring gone. He did not score in the second half. Finishes with 12 points. Chambers is at the free throw line. Good on the first. Next one will even the contest. He is five of six from the free throw line tonight. Got the roll. Timeout call. This one charged to Evans. We're in an even ball game. Evans 49. Lakeside Evans 49. Joel Hillsman, Chad Cook, glad that you're with us on our SGB TV. Courtside seats inside of Evans High School and the Evans Gymnasium. And boy, you want to talk about region tournaments coming in from all over the place. Lithonia in 5A has had a dominating season and have lost two in a row and will go in as the number four seed in the 5A tournament. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Region three here matched up with Region 1, which is the Valdosta, Houston County, Coffee region. Valdosta has been feeling pretty good about themselves this season. 20-plus win regular season. The cheese wagon rides are on the way. The long ones. And it's state tournament basketball. That's what you've got to do. Williams scores. Old-fashioned big boy basketball. Chris Williams uses, uses his size. Come up with the big bucket in the post. Steal. a little disagreement among the refs. The one out near half court, one to call a charge here. I think Simpson was probably moving. Yeah, he was sliding there. We who will go to the free throw line. You mentioned it earlier, a big time second half from a we who. He's been clutch. Pushes the lead for Lakeside Evans out to three. Good. Made them both. Did they count that? He waved his arms, no. Again, you had Rico Gonzalez working Christian Chambers off the ball. You see it at the, uh, the right side of your screen. He's bodying up Christian Chambers, gets called for the foul right before Daniel Simpson let it fly. Yeah, Chambers will be going to the free throw line. Big, massive free throws coming up for Evans. That's twice Gonzalez got called for that. You really don't want to give Christian two free throws without having to work for it at all. 53 to 50, 142 to go. It rolled out in seven of nine from the free throw line. It's a three point game. Aviles gets it up ahead. Quickly now turning back is McGee. McGee now lost it. They fight for it down low. McGee comes away with it. Coach Jeff Williams is, is beside himself right now. Yeah, he's screaming for a timeout. And they're going to give it to him. And Coach Kenny is walking all the way out on the floor. I mean, he's all the way out on the floor. Now he's all the way at the free throw line. <laughs> Coach Kenny not liking it, and he, he doesn't care about the timeout. He's having words with the officials and does not like it as you take a look at the SGB TV instant replay. He walks back to the bench. 132 to go, 53 to 50. 
You know, that play by Ricky McGee, he was playing with fire there. You've got a three-point lead with less than two minutes to go, and he drives baseline, kind of threw a chicken wing elbow out there, could have got called for the offensive foul, then he lost control of it. On the prior play, when, when Lakeside was leading by two, he was pushing the ball at the court, and Jeff Williams was imploring him to slow the ball down. We'll see if he's gotten the message by now. Up three with 92 seconds to go. I assume Lakeside will try to take the air out of the ball here. Velas circling. So Gonzalez, Gonzalez, short corner jumper, no good. Chambers gets the rebound, look out. And a foul is called. Questionable shot selection by Gonzalez with a three-point lead. Very much so because you know at some point they're going to have to foul you. And Chambers is at the free throw line. No good. Missed it. Rebound comes off the Gonzalez. A big blown free throw. He's missed two in a row. 70 seconds. Mincy comes in and gets the steal. On the way, he's fouled on the way up. And we'll go to the free throw line. Christian Chambers upsetting himself for blowing those free throws. But Justin Mincy now, the 5'10 junior, will go to the free throw line after ripping that steal away as you take a look at that into SUV TV, AUGB ball, instant replay. So now for 65 seconds, Avilas is going to have to be better with the ball. Got stripped clean on that last play. Free throw, good from Mincy. That's his first trip to the line today, by the way. He has five points. He has one more coming. The Hedy Jr. guard, the southpaw. Good look at the young man. Collects himself and goes through his free throw routine. Good. Made them both. Big free throw. It's a one-point ball game, and a timeout is called with 65 seconds to go. Lakeside Evans 53. Evans 52, AUGB Ball Region 3-6A championship right here on SUV TV. You know, in the last three plays we've seen Ricky McGee get a little out of control. Ricardo Gonzalez take a questionable shot for Lakeside, and then Alex Avilas gets stripped near half court. Those three guys, the, the primary ball handlers for Lakeside, are going to have to do a good job here these last 65 seconds. I don't know, Joel. Do you think... You know, do you just hold this thing, try to hold it for the, for the remainder, or, or do you continue to attack and maybe take layups only if you're Coach Jeff Williams? I'm not one for stall ball. Do not get me on that. I'm about to get out of here without getting on that. Do you take a 15-footer like Gonzalez did? No, I make them foul me. They've got to foul me. Out of the timeout. Here we go. Avilas. Foul by Mincy, and that was that was very bad. That was very bad. I mean, what else is Mincy supposed to do? That that is very bad. That is a bad call. That, that's that's not a foul. That that's not a foul. That's that's not a foul. I'm sorry. That's not. A, there's no way you can break that down to me and show that that is a foul. Crowd now Channing take his whistle. 53-52. <laughs> Avilas crosses the timeline. Oh, he carried. Yes. <laughs> Home in violation. He, he took that right over there to the local airport. You know what that is? That's called playground justice. <laughs> Foul 50 seconds. Here comes Mincy across the timeline. Everybody's on their feet. King, the Chambers. Chambers on the attack, goes up and scores! Christian Chambers, and they take the lead, and a quick timeout call by Evans. And it's a one-point lead now, 54-53 for Evans on a Christian Chambers drive and score as you take a look at the crowd. And the AUGB ball, instant replay. 
Great cross-court pass. And then Chambers on the attack, went right at Chris Williams. Williams didn't want to get the foul. And Chambers scored. Chambers has had a massive, massive fourth quarter. 11 points in this quarter. 13 in the half. 22 in the game. For Christian Chamber, the 6'2 senior. All right. Gonzalez and Avilas are on the floor. They're dangerous. Iwihu and McGee also with Williams. The five on the floor for Lakeside Evans. Everybody inside the gym up roaring and stomping on bleachers. Chambers is aggressively attacking him. Here's Gonzalez, and now Coach Jeff Williams says no. A timeout is called. 20 and 210 seconds. I'll tell you what, there's uh, Jeff Williams has his work cut out for him. There's really no offensive rhythm right now for Lakeside, but if I'm Coach Williams, I'm going to go ahead and try to get the ball inside to Chris Williams. Make Evans foul him. He's got the size advantage. He's got the ability to score in the post. That's which direction I would go. Well, coming out of the timeout now. 54-53, 20 and 210 seconds. Side out of bounds. Ricardo Gonzalez is the trigger. McGee. To Iwihu, 13 seconds. Iwihu to McGee, put it up. No, board to Chambers, and Chambers is fouled by Gonzalez. And now a technical foul has been called, I believe. Was it called on Gonzalez? Coach Williams having a conversation with Gonzalez. And I believe a technical foul has been called and he's telling him that you can't have that happen at this juncture of the game. That's gonna be massive. It's gonna be two shots for the foul, two shots for the technical and the ball. And Gonzalez was saying that he was just telling him that he was he thought he walked. But you know, this this uh this crew has been a little sensitive. There you go. So the ball game in essence is over. Technical foul called on Ricardo Gonzalez. It is a one-point game. Chambers will get two free throws for the foul, two free throws for the technical, and they will get the ball. So Chambers now to put it away from the 15-foot mark. Well, left the door ajar just for a moment. They've still got three more free throws and the ball. Not the word. So now you'll have the technicals coming up. Now there's, there's, it's not hard. You called the tech, he called a foul. It's two free throws for the foul, two free throws for the tech. Let's go. Chambers, free throw number three, good. I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I, let me apologize publicly for coming down like that, but I just, just, Free throws good. So he made three out of the four of them. The lead is at four. Oh, excuse me, just one more. Now look at me, losing now, count. Now how you get to five? I, I don't, don't know, know how he's getting five free throws. Did they call, he's gonna get six free throws? 
Wow. Did they call a double tech or two techs? He must have because that is six free throws. Six free throws put the ball game away. That must have been what they were discussing. Five-point game. It'll be Evans basketball, and Coach Kitty calls a timeout. He wants to feel good about this one. Coach Jeff Williams just cannot believe it. So you had the personal foul, and then you had two technical fouls called, six free throws, and he went four of six from the free throw line. And he has 26 points in the contest, and they head for the exits. Yeah, the last offensive possession for Lakeside wasn't a good one. You know, ever since Briscoe exited the game, the Panthers had trouble finding anything in the half court. And, and then the technical foul fest. I like that word, technical foul fest, because that, that's, that's what that was. Inbound to Chambers. Foul is given by Avila. And Chambers is about to go back to the free throw line and put more salt in the wound. The region championship is 6.1 seconds away, and they'll do it on their home floor. I mean, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel right now from the 15-foot mark. And now Christian Chambers turns to the student section and says, make noise. I don't need it to be quiet to stick these free throws. 28 in the game. Inbound to McGee. They don't even have to cross the timeline. And the ball game is over. The Evans Knights are the Region 3 6 8 champions with a 60 to 53 victory over Lakeside Evans, and they will be the number one seed out of the region. And the state tournament begins next Friday for the love of basketball on Valentine's Day. Final thoughts, Chad Cook? Well, I want to hand it to Evans, of course, for a, for a region championship, a formidable uh, showing here. Lakeside for fighting as hard as they did, the fifth seed coming one possession away. And then Christian Chambers at the end, I'm not sure, I think we're probably gonna see it here, making that big bucket to put his team ahead. He's been scoring buckets around here for years. We see him here, a little Kobe type jump shot. Congratulations to the Knights, Chambers, Mincy, and the whole team. 17 points in the fourth quarter for Christian Chambers. He finishes with 28. Brazen James, a quiet night, he only had two. 12 from Rashad King, who had a very, very effective night. And Cam Warren had two off of the bench. Jay Stevens finished with eight for Evans. And Briscoe, we talked about him. He finished with 12. Elise Ewihu finishes with 11. As the crowd roars as that championship trophy is held high in the air. Evans, the region champs, they win it at home on their home floor. Final score, 60 to 53 for Chad Cook. Man, pleasure working with you down here at Region 36A. Hey, man, I've been wanting to do this forever. You're the best, and I appreciate you coming to Augusta and blessing us with your voice. Oh, man, thank you, man. It's, it's good basketball in the state of Georgia. He's Chad Cook, and for our entire SUV TV crew, and you, the listeners, and the viewers, we thank you. Remember, tomorrow it is the Bracket Breakdown at 7.30 live with the state tournament. And also, due to some cancellations, you may get some Monday basketball. We'll see you down the road. I'm Joe Hillsman, the SUV TV.com.